Your camera, your cell phone is that opportunity. You do not need to have a big giant camera. Thank you. I like you, you guys are all like snapping. Your fingers are snapping. This is hilarious. Um, I love it. It's different, right? Who wants to do the same old, same old? So because I'm a, a social media news outlet, even when I talk, I'm going to go live on myself. So what I was doing was figuring out where the camera was so that I could hit. Are we ready to go live? I hope I didn't scare the dogs. Okay. I have three Chihuahua mixes at home. We are live now on Jane Unchained and very excited to be live here at the Luxembourg International Animal Rights Conference. Um, okay, I want to explain to people watching, people are not clapping because there are so many dogs here, which I think is wonderful, right? I would say clap for that, except maybe snap for that, right? Snap for that, there are dogs here, it's incredible. So they don't want to upset the dogs, so they said snap instead of clap, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Uh, makes me so happy that you know we are such an evolved crowd. What am I talking about today? Would you like to be a contributor? Okay, last year I spoke here, you already said yes? Last year I spoke here, and usually when I speak, um, one or two people come up to me afterwards and say, wow, I really want to do that. So I brought with me from the United States some stabilizers and some Jane Unchained hats. So think about it. Would you like to use your cell phone to change the world for animals, to achieve a vegan world? All right, let's do it. Um, okay, janeunchained.com, Jane Unchained News on IG, Facebook.com slash Jane Velez Mitchell. Everybody has social media. Each of you, if you don't want to become a Jane Unchained contributor, you can create your own network. Believe me, I don't want the exclusive on this. After 40 years of working in the news business, and I used to cover crime, uh, I'd like to be sitting on a beach eating a trashy novel like Fifty Shades of Grey and eating some vegan bonbons. You know, I've worked my you-know-what off. I'm doing it because we got to do it. Because we want, what do we want? We want, our mission is a vegan world. Can we do it? You know we can do it. Are we doing it? It's happening before our eyes. So, within that overall mission, our mission is to hit the tipping point. We don't have to convert 100%. You know, Malcolm Gladwell, who wrote the tipping point, has an estimate, other people have other estimates, but let's say 3.5% of the population goes vegan, and we are well on our way. Once that happens, vegan becomes the new normal, and then all the people who just mindlessly eat meat burgers will mindlessly eat vegan burgers. It will become the norm, and we see this happening already. I can walk into a restaurant, um, a juice bar in Los Angeles, and look around, and this has happened to me several times, it's not a vegan restaurant, it doesn't advertise the word vegan, and all of a sudden, looking at all the different things they have for sale, I realize, oh my God, they're a vegan restaurant and they don't even know it. That's the kind of thing we wanna see. So, here's the focus of my talk. Your most powerful tool is your cell phone. My cell phone is going live right now, and because it's something like four in the morning in LA, there aren't that many people watching. However, guess what? This video, once it's saved, will exist forever, and it can accumulate more people day after day, week after week, month after month. So what I have to say about your cell phone is you're a network. Every single person here is a potential network. All they need is their cell phone. What is a network? It is a production company with a pipeline to an audience. Everybody with a cell phone has a production company. You can do videos. You can dress them up with emojis and special effects. iMovie exists in the cell phone. You can edit them. 
and then you can put them out to an audience. What's your audience? Your Facebook friends, your IG followers. Um, how many people here are on LinkedIn? Okay, I friend everybody on LinkedIn. Everybody eats, right? So I don't care who they are, they wanna, they wanna be my friend, I am gonna accept them. So I would urge everybody to do the same. I already have more than 11,000 people on LinkedIn that I connect with that I send them these videos all the time. These are things that everybody can do. So, here we go. I'm Natasha and I'm Luca and together we're that vegan couple on YouTube and other social media. We are from Australia but tonight we are here in San Francisco, US of A. Uh, we are taking part in a Cube of Truth. In fact that's the world's largest ever Cube of yes. Truth. Yes, we're making history tonight and the whole point of a Cube of Truth is to show the public what the industry does not show us and that is the truth behind how meat, dairy and eggs are produced and also what happens to animals for clothing, for testing, uh, for all those ways that we use and exploit animals. Anyone who hasn't seen A Cube of Truth, it's quite the art piece. It's very engaging yeah. and it piques people's curiosity. So, uh, that was a video we did at the world's largest Cube of Truth with two of my favorite people, that vegan couple. And I'm gonna say this over and over again, give yourself a handle, okay? I'm Jane Unchained, they're that vegan couple. There's another uh, couple who are not very annoying at all, but they call themselves those annoying vegans. And it's catchy. Or uh, my ex-girlfriend, uh, she was that snarky vegan girl, okay? And she was snarky. No, she wasn't that snarky actually, but you want something that will grab the attention and is memorable. I mean, my name isn't that memorable. People say, you know, oh, what you, I know you, you're Joan Valdez Mendez. No, I'm not Joan Valdez Mendez, I'm Jane Velez Mitchell. But Jane Unchained, people remember. So give yourself a media handle. And maybe at the end we can play a game where we can come up with some media handles for some of you. It's a lot of fun. So, okay, you saw a cube of truth. That was done on videotape with a nice camera and it was edited and um, it was a polished piece. Here's the same concept done live. We are live in Copenhagen, Denmark, and you can see all the traditional square type imagery, but in the center of one of the most popular squares in Copenhagen, what do we find? Anonymous for the Voiceless Cube of Truth. And there is a very strong animal rights movement occurring here. Uh, people are showing the truth about what happens in animal agriculture, wearing their anonymous masks, and they're showing animals headed to slaughter, animals who, those who eat them, essentially order the hit on these animals as people are dining right next door and try. So I did that video just a couple of days ago in Copenhagen when I went there. Uh, as soon as I landed, well, I went on Facebook, and I urge everybody, you probably all do this already, look on Facebook, uh, find your events, and that's where you would go to go live. Now, a lot of you will just look on Facebook and see an event and go to it. My suggestion is bring 1,000 or 2,000 people with you by just going live on your cell phone. So um, I knew from Facebook there was going to be a protest outside a dairy festival, as soon as I dropped off my bag, I went right to the dairy festival, covered that protest, which was great, and um, really great group there in Copenhagen. And then one of the women who was there said, you know, there's a cube of truth going on. And I said, where? And she told me, and I just went immediately to the cube of truth, and that's what I did. I went live with this live video. In the course of the live video, which I won't show you because it goes on for a while, I met the founder of Denmark's vegan party, which he's an incredibly articulate, charismatic young man, and I was very excited about that. So now when I get back home, in fact, I could do it right here, but I'm busy doing something else right now, but I will tell our Instagram person to take that piece and put it on Instagram, the part with the Danish party 
founder. So you never know what you're going to come up with when you're live because you're just getting it all. And so sometimes inside the live video is a real gem. You can pull that out and edit it down and put it on Instagram or Instagram TV. So uh, this is a, a squeeze cue because shaky video is dead. Don't go out and do shaky video with your hand. Nobody wants to watch it. In fact, there's giant billboards in LA that say shaky video is dead. All right, so again, this, this is a squeeze cue stabilizer. I brought two. Uh, who, the people who become contributors, I'm gonna give you one right now because shipping to Europe is a big pain in the you know what. Oh, great, oh yes, and where are you from? Barcelona, Barcelona. Maybe we have a new Barcelona contributor. Don't let this stop you. If I run out, I will get you a stabilizer and a hat, okay? Because look, we put media. Now, what is media? This, okay, I'm not, I'm, wait, we, we can't be angry. We have to be happy, okay? So I'm not gonna be angry. But I get angry when people say the media is just the established media, when they're not telling the truth. We are citizen journalists. Every single person here, a potential citizen journalist, we are bringing out the truth. We are more legitimate journalists than they are. Right? Let's get some snaps going for that one. Okay, so I want you to see this. See the stabilizer in action. This is at a protest march in San Francisco led by Wayne Chung of DXC. There, do you see him with the stabilizer? He uses it all the time. dynamic, right? I mean, boy. Now, do you think the mainstream media covers those incredibly visual marches? No. There's two things that will pretty much guarantee you getting mainstream media coverage. And by the way, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope our local news media shows up here. Let's hear it for Luxembourg local media if they show up, right? I applaud them, but or I snap for them. But the truth is, that DXC holds incredibly dynamic marches like that all the time and gets zero news coverage. You know when they get news coverage? When 47 or 70 of them are arrested. So in order to get mainstream media coverage in uh, large swaths of the United States, you have to get arrested or get naked. You know, two, one of the two, uh, seriously, that's it. So what's our goal? Our goal is to shatter the mainstream media blackout on animal rights and saturate social media with vegan animal rights content to normalize veganism to make veganism the norm. Now, I will admit to you that, sure, the Facebook videos are not highly polished, well-edited videos. You saw the difference between a nicely edited video that we did uh, at the very same Cube of Truth and then one that where we did live. The difference is, A, Facebook will send out your live video to more people, okay, than a taped piece that's edited because they encourage Facebook Live. And they invented it. It's their right to encourage it. So they will send it out to more people. The other thing is there's something about immediacy. When people see something, even if it's immediacy afterwards, there's a certain raw, unfilteredness to live videos. Obviously, they are what they are. Nobody can accuse you of editing a live video when it's live. So um, there's, there's a certain power and immediacy to a live video that a tape video does not have. Additionally, you don't have to stay up till four in the morning editing it. Okay, it's done, boom, it's over, you're on to the next one. So we can do more content over um, just putting one nice thing together. Now that's not to say that I don't think people should put one nice thing together. There are people who get 20 million views with one nice video, one incredible video, all the power to them. But we have different 
strategies. We got to use a whole bunch of different strategies. So let me just show you, just uh, to give you an idea of some of the uh, videos that we have. Well, there were a lot of videos there, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So this is our LA crew. Never underestimate the ability of a small but determined group of individuals to change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever does. There they are, uh, the Jane Unchained crew, and that's my little dog Foxy that I'm holding right there, who I'm holding. And um, what? there's Fabian. You see Fabian right there? She's uh, second from uh, the left. Um, and what we want to do is make this more global. This is a global movement. And so we are all earthlings. We are one vegan nation, right? One vegan nation. So that's why I really want to focus on getting some contributors, hopefully from Barcelona and from other parts of the world. Where are you from? Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Woo! Yes. And uh, so we currently have 70 contributors and we are growing, just like a mainstream media network. You know, let's not leave it up to the people who are morally bankrupt and who have only one value, money, to come up with great ideas. Anybody can create a network. And listen, put me out of business. Somebody out there, do it better, seriously. One of the great things about veganism is that I don't think we compete in the same way. You know, I'm friends with the guys from Plant Based News. I love them. I love Donnie Moss of TheirTurn.net. I love Live Kindly. I love Veg News. I love all of the outlets, World Animal News. We're in it together because we're not just about making money. We're about, in fact, it's a money pit. It's, <laughs> that's why I became a nonprofit. I turned it from a money pit into a nonprofit. We are about changing the world and we're running out of time. So, um, just to give you an example of some incredible moments that you can capture when you are a contributor, um, this is our contributor, Naturally Cheyenne. She has another name, I don't even know what it is, but her, her, her handle is Naturally Cheyenne, and she was in London and. The change that is coming, it is palpable. It exists in the hearts and minds of each and every one of us. Feel it, believe it. The change is coming. The sun will one day set on this world and a new dawn will rise. Out of the ashes of violence, hope will rise. Now we as a movement exist in the millions of individuals, but together we move as one. And as one, we cannot be stopped. We will not be stopped. Now, by the way, you saw uh, that th those are the guys from uh, Plant Based News back there, Klaus and Robbie, I believe, and you also saw uh, that vegan couple. We were all there. Well, this was such a great speech. I mean, it gives me chills. You're only seeing a snippet of it. It was really one of the all-time great speeches, and I'll tell you uh, where it ends up in a minute. And, okay, so just to give you a flavor of how we come live from everywhere. Hello, everyone. We are live at the official Animal Rights March Miami 2018. This is Shannon Blair reporting live for JaneUnchained.com. Yes. Hundreds of activists have come out in support of the animals today. Check it out. So, you know, when people see this, by the way, they're not going to necessarily watch the whole thing. You know, um, advertisers spend millions of dollars putting together 30-second commercials that people basically ignore, right? You don't sit there studying the commercials. Oh, it's a commercial break. I can go do something else. I can make a phone call. I can go on the Internet. Why do they spend so many millions of dollars putting money in? Because they know it gets into the reptilian brain. It's going to get there one way or another. They're not, they're not, in their minds, wasting the money. They know. They see the results. It's the same thing with this content. We want to saturate social media with this content. It's going to have an impact. People have to see something 12 times before they even start thinking about it. So we, content is a big part of the battle to completely saturate social media with content. 
And I believe that's one reason why the younger generation is going vegan much more rapidly because they're not being constantly brainwashed on mainstream media with the meat, dairy, and pharmaceutical commercials. They're on social media, they're on Instagram, they're on their phones, and they are seeing the pig vigils and they're seeing the uh, cubes of truth and they're seeing all the content that a lot of people are putting out. Now, what could you do if you were a Jane Unchained contributor? You could hear about a breaking news story and run there. And this is what one of our great contributors, Danny Rukin, who I also met at a conference in Washington, D.C., this is what she put together. Oh, they're not? Okay. Can you tell me anything that's happening? No, I, you know, there's state patrols right up there. Okay. They'll be able to help So you. gotta go up there. Okay, so, but these are chickens here. Wow. Oh, this is just so... All right, uh, they're telling me I need to go somewhere else, but this is clearly where I need to be. This is horrific. Oh my God, oh my God, this is horrific. This is horrific. Oh God, help us. Oh my God, this one looks dead. All right, he's gonna, um, so uh, this was this goes on for a while, but it's really, really well done. She literally heard about a chicken truck accident and ran to the scene, and it's very emotional. And what we do is when we see a video that really has impact, we'll boost it. We do have funding. We have donors that help us boost certain posts, which is our biggest expense. And so this one got a tremendous number of views because, you know, see, the thing is, you know, we're so disconnected, as you all know, uh, from animals that we don't even obviously these people who are eating animals they're not even connecting them to being animals and when they see something like that even if they watch for three seconds they can never unwatch it they can never forget it it has a very big impact and that's why one of the most important places where we go live is at the save movement vigils and um, the save movement is another groundbreaking along with the cube of truth movement that literally is exposing the reality, getting as close as we can to the horror that is going on constantly and showing it to people, and it's happening right in public. It doesn't require any uh, breaking of laws. It's something anybody can see if they're standing at the appropriate street corner, and that's why it's so important to go live at these vigils. So when people see that, they are suddenly confronted with the reality. And people will do anything in their power, the average meat eater, to avoid being confronted with the reality of what they're doing. I will never forget, I had been at a vigil, and it was in the wintertime. Now, I'm in California, but I had talked to Anita Krines, the founder of the SAVE movement, and she was talking about the polar vortex and how some of these pigs were arriving with severe frostbite or even frozen to death. So I ran into a neighbor who was walking her dog, and she said, oh, it's so terrible what's happening in the, in the other parts of the country. You know, oh my God, the cold, and I said, Imagine what the animals in the open air slaughterhouse bound trucks are going through in the sub zero weather. And she literally just went like this and walked away from me. <laughs> um, happens a lot. Uh, in any case, what, what she didn't like about that was that I was confronting her, you know, do the dots, connect the dots. She didn't. And I didn't do it out of meanness. I just did it because I had just talked to Anita Krines and she was telling me about the polar vortex and the horrors that she was witnessing with her own eyes. People don't want to connect the dots. Plausible deniability. That's what people want. That's what it's all about. How do we shatter that plausible deniability? When we go live at a vigil and they see those pigs or those cows or those chickens 
It shatters their plausible deniability. They can't pretend that they didn't see it, and it has an impact. So what I tell people is when you go live, please try to start with the pigs. Now, I notice we didn't start with the pigs there. Sometimes it's impossible because it can be dark, but I say hold off and wait, and I try to do the same thing right till the moment where you can see the pigs, somebody has a light, boom, then um, go live. Because what will happen with a lot of people is they don't want to see it. So they'll, oh, wait, what, what's the next story? I want to see a story about, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, but it's there. You got them. You, you, you got the truth to them. So that's one of the most powerful parts of this is getting the truth to people. You know, I, I invited uh, two friends of mine to go to a pig vigil. I, ha how many of you had the experience of not being able to get non-vegans to go to a pig vigil? or a cow vigil, or any kind of vigil, right? So they agreed, and then they backed out. And one said, I think my husband's, uh, he's having second thoughts. He thinks it's going to make him sick to his stomach. So I said, well, then, obviously, if it's going to make him sick to his stomach to go see a pig headed for slaughter, he shouldn't be ever eating pigs again. Love, kisses, and hugs. So... Uh, <laughs> The point is that if he were to see one of our videos, he would be there. He would be there virtually. We have 7.7 .7 billion human beings on this planet. There are way too many people to talk to them individually. And let's face it, and I'll cop to this too, we like to talk in our bubble to each other. It makes us feel good, right? But it's not helping the animals. Primarily, what's helping the animals is getting that word out to people who don't want to hear it. I was on a tour when I was in Copenhagen, and the two people on either side of me started talking about how they had a great dinner, and one talked about having pulled pork, and I said, I call pulled pork pig. Again, did not, did not win a lot of friends on that, but uh, <laughs> one of the things we can do is create really dramatic videos and then go live and videotape them. So check this out. There was a huge scandal involving Fair Oaks Farms, which is a so-called humane dairy in Indiana outside Chicago. And the amazing animal recovery mission went undercover and showed the most horrific abuse to the point where even the local papers were talking about betrayal because this farm does tours about how wonderful they are to the, to the cows. There's a bunch of lawsuits. It's a real scandal. So um, take a look at this dramatic street theater that's done inside a supermarket that's, that was still selling the product, uh, which is branded or was branded as Fair Life. Okay, so this is a demonstration of the dairy industry where female cows are forcibly impregnated. They carry a baby for nine months, just like a human female. And then the day their precious baby's born, they are ripped away from their mother. Their mothers cry out for days, sometimes weeks. Please give me my baby back, no. So a recent undercover investigation came out from Fair Oaks Farm in Indiana. The brand Fair Life is one of their products, which is distributed by Coca-Cola. What happens to baby cows? So wasn't that wasn't that visual? Really gives you a feeling, right? It deserves a couple of snaps. That gives you a feeling of what these animals go through. And those were real mothers and their real children. And actually, the funny thing is that somebody who was a passerby videotaped it and sold it to some outlet, to some like tabloid outlet for, and it got a whole bunch of views on that as well. So, um, how many of you watch TV sometimes and you're frustrated with what you're seeing when it involves climate change or you would, it involves something that that is related to what we are here for today. Uh, do you sometimes feel like, I could do it better? Yes, right? Okay, so the, Jane Unchained, or whatever you want to do on your own, gives you a chance to be a citizen journalist and report, just like a journalist would. And, you know, there are a lot of rules, but the basic rule is who, what, when, where, why, how. Just tell the story. So, here we go in New York City. We are live for Jane Unchained. 
campaign in Times Square, New York City, with Donnie Moss and protesters under the massive Coca-Cola billboard here demanding that the CEO of Coca-Cola ditch dairy now because of the horrific cruelty due to the uh, expose of the undercover footage from Fairlife Farms by Animal Recovery Mission. We're here with Donnie Moss, who is an organizer of this protest. Donnie, what's happening here? So after this footage was released to the public, Coca-Cola issued a statement. I want to read that statement to you. We care deeply about animal welfare, and these acts left all of us at Coca-Cola with heavy hearts. Any form of animal cruelty is unacceptable and against our values. If any of this is true, then Coca-Cola CEO James Quincy has to not only sever ties with Fairlife, but get out of the dairy industry altogether because abuse and violence is built into the dairy industry. There is no way to produce milk without really terrorizing animals. The cows are forcibly impregnated, which is an act of sexual violence. Their babies are torn away from them at birth, which leads to horrible emotional stress for both the mother and the baby. Uh, dairy cows have their tails cut off through the bone. They have their horns removed. So, would you ever hear any of that truth on a mainstream media outlet? No. So this is our opportunity to tell the real story. I mean, we've heard a lot about the term fake news. Well, fake news isn't just reporting a lie. It's also not reporting the truth. It's rebroadcasting pictures of cows frolicking through the grass when you're talking about the dairy industry. And this is what mainstream media does constantly, day in and day out. So if you're frustrated by that and you want the opportunity to tell the real story, your camera, your cell phone is that opportunity. You do not need to have a big giant camera. It goes out right away and it tells the real story. And it's really very empowering when you get used to doing that and telling the real story. Now, because I am a journalist, I always say, I invite Coca-Cola, Fairlife, or Fair Oaks on any time to respond to anything that was said there. In fact, we love to dialogue with you, Coca-Cola, Fairlife, or Fair Oaks Farms. In fact, we tried to reach you repeatedly to get a statement about all of this. We actually went live calling Coca-Cola. We, we tried to reach Coca-Cola and we said, we're, we're, we were demonstrating outside a Coca-Cola building, a bottling company in Los Angeles. We went live while we were calling Coca-Cola and according to uh, what observers saw, getting the runaround from Coca-Cola. And I just want to say that when you're live often enough, you're bound to catch really great moments. You saw Earthling Ed. Now check out this speech by somebody who's not quite as well known as Earthling Ed, but she gave a really great speech during a march. Changing many of us in the most profound way. Every day we wake up with a choice. Do we lead a life where others are forced to suffer on our behalf? Or do we live in line with our morals? Our palates do not justify murder. Our desires will never be an excuse to force someone into a non-consensual act. Animals are not born into this world with the sole purpose of becoming our food. Their purpose exists far outside of us, and their worth escapes our very comprehension. And it's, you know, it goes on and on. But wouldn't you agree that that's a powerful speech and that it has the background with, it's very theatrical. And one of the things, I mean, just naturally, one of the things about going live is that you're capturing life as it happens. And when people are talking off the cuff in a spontaneous situation, they're often far more passionate and real than they are when it's scripted and they're sitting down and, reading something or memorizing something. So you're, you're, you're getting the opportunity to catch things as they really happen. You're getting to really capture history in the making. I mean, our movement is going to be historic. It literally is the evolution of the human species from purported carnivores to herbivores, from killers to non-killers. It's literally the most important development in human history, and we can document it live. I mean, it's just, to me, it's so exciting, the idea that we can do that. You know, Facebook Live didn't even exist, I think, five years ago. 
It didn't. This is a unique opportunity, a unique opportunity. And then uh, you can also take that the good clips, as I mentioned before, put them in your iMovie, edit them down, and put them on Instagram. So you can repurpose it and put it on YouTube and put it here, there, and everywhere. Um, once again, I, I do have a couple of Save Movement vigils because I'd say, if there's one thing you should go live I'm so at, sorry. I love you. it's these, I'm these so vigils. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Hi, babies. I'm so sorry. I love you. I'm so sorry. We're so sorry. We're so sorry, honeys. We're so sorry, baby. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. I'm looking at your eye. I love you. Now, I'm so sorry. I have one more so here. Sorry, honey. This is a Latin American contributor. Hey there, this is Fede again from Buenos Aires Animal Safe. I'm here in front of a truck full of these beautiful bees that they're about to, to get inside the slaughterhouse. And I feel very sad about this. It's so unnecessary, these beautiful beings, so friendly, healthy animals to keep the same as us. I mean, uh, uh, for how many of you, when you see that, it hits your heart, right? I see you tearing up. People at home need to see this. They need to see the steak that they're cutting into or the piece of meat that they're cutting into or thoughtlessly eating in a sandwich was a being that is just like their dog, their beloved dog or cat at home. And the best way to show them that is with the vigils. I'm gonna quickly bounce through. I only have five minutes, so um, we can also go live at panels. Can you hear me okay? okay. This is yeah. a panel in North Carolina. Some of the greatest speakers. Such very, very small audience. Evolution. You can also do. We are live on Lunch Break Live with the extraordinary Gianna Simone of Star Trek Into Darkness, a vegan star, joining us on Lunch Break Live today. We're so delighted to have you. Take it away. Okay. So first we're making um, one of my favorite recipes, which are oatmeal cookies, and there's only two ingredients. And that's why she's so thin. There's only two ingredients, <laughs> bananas and something else. Um, one of the best talks that I ever heard was basically, and you're, I hope you stay and hear Dr. Selesh Rao. Um, I heard him speaking at pretty much an open field. There wasn't that, there weren't very few people there. It was at the incredible Rowdy Girl Sanctuary. There were people there, but they were spread out. And this genius was talking about how to create a vegan world by 2026. And this speech changed my life. And I was so happy to be able to. Um, so that's how much things changed in 10 years. And after that, we cannot even imagine going back to an era without the internet. So he um, was one of the developers of the internet, and he has a plan to create a vegan world by 2026. Uh, and I really hope you watch the documentary that I did on him, which comes up in a second. Just quickly, okay, we reached 16.5 million views in 2017. We hit 17.6 million views in 2018 for a total of almost 10 million minutes. That's a lot of content viewed. We also do what other networks do. Um, we uh, did a music video. I'll play a few seconds of that. I didn't kill today. I found a better way. Nobody had to die. They didn't even cry. The revolution. Regarding food, what would you tell consumers? I would tell consumers to eat less or no meat. To yeah, we go to regular news conferences and ask the tough questions that the mainstream media doesn't ask. We also tag influencers like New York Times, The Washington Post. Got overexcited there. Um, we tag, uh, 
We tag influencers, the New York Times, the Washington Post, MSNBC, those kinds of people. Now, a lot of the videos you've seen have gone into our new first documentary called Countdown to Year Zero. Watch it before it's too late. It is streaming on Amazon Prime. So if you are an Amazon Prime member, it's free. If not, it's 99 cents, which was the least it was advised uh, to, to show it for. And uh, I hope millions of non-vegans, pre-vegans get to watch it. Here's a trailer. We're going to be showing the entire documentary this Saturday right after lunch. The moral position is to resist this and to end it. People need to know that this is the reality. What's the So we have a system that's based on, you know, making money off death, disease, and destruction. It's something that we have never, ever faced before. The, the trees are going up in flames. We have 10 years to turn it around. The Earth is telling us we have to change. Inside of here is my daughter. I want her to have a good planet to live on, not just a planet to live on, because this planet will survive us. This affects everything. That's the only way out that we have. That's the only way out where I see light. Yeah, that's the number one thing you can do to reduce climate change. And I totally recommend it. Yeah, it is historic. In 20, 30 years, you'll have all our friends hitting us up being like, yo, you're a f***ing visionary. It is a fight against ignorance and apathy. Moin. So yeah, we're going to show that, and it showcases the work of Dr. Selesh Rao. So uh, I think I'll leave it there. We're pretty much out of time, but I really hope that Yes, of course, we are looking for Jane Unchained contributors, but however you want to do it, if you want to do it for yourself or start your own network or do it for your own friend, family, and colleague, what, what I say, it's like taking thousands of people with you wherever you go. Take some of the energy you use. Uh, you know, studies have shown the hardest people to influence can be those closest to you because they take it personally. And I don't know how many of you have had the experience of converting a stranger to veganism in five minutes when you've been dealing with that reluctant relative for two decades or three decades. So take some of that energy you're putting into those people and maybe put it into this. It's fun. It is effective. I mean, when I go into a Costco and somebody comes up to me and says, Jane Unchained, I stopped, I started eating vegan because I saw one of your videos. It makes my heart sing. It makes me so happy and I have hope for this world. So thank you all for listening and let's just hit the vegan tipping point. <laughs>